Hi, people. Uh, so this is a subject that I've touched on before, particularly last year when um, I made a number of videos about the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Um, but I think it's worth reiterating. I think it's important because there have been renewed calls, particularly from Ukrainians, for a sort of collective boycotting or a collective um, penalising of Russians. And I'm not convinced it's the right approach. Um, now, before I get into this, uh, just a caveat. If I if I had lost family members to to Russian airstrikes or Russian actions, um, I don't know how I would feel. I would probably have resentment towards all Russians. Um, this is what happens in war. Um, so. I want to be clear that this video was not about judging Ukrainian sentiments because if my country had been invaded and occupied, then, you know, no matter how open-minded you are, there are basic human sentiments there. I'm just going to move, actually, because the battery's running low and I don't want to, I don't want this to conk out in the middle of the video. Let's see here. Yeah, so... That, that's something I'm considering, of course, in, in total war, there will be those sentiments um, where, you know, if you'd lost your whole family to Russian soldiers, uh, you're not going to sort of think, well, they're not all bad. Okay, it's, it's a human sort of reaction. It's a bit like after World War II in Britain, there was for a long time anti-German sentiments. And again, you know, it's... If I think if you experience war directly that way, and I never have, um, it, it gets people into a different frame of thinking than we necessarily would outside of that situation. Nevertheless, I um, I feel it's important that these dissident Russians are supported. Um, I mean, I know recently at the Oscars, some Ukrainians weren't happy about the fact that an independent say Navalny uh, got nominated. Um, they felt that the the attention should have been for President Zelensky to make an address at the Oscars. I think he did last year. Um, but, you know, Navalny is not the problem. Putin is the problem. And surely drawing attention to those forces within Russia that are anti-Putin is a good thing. Um, particularly a courageous man like Alexei Navalny, who's currently languishing in a prison because he stood up against the regime. Now, I I think that is something that should be recognised. You know, there's different types of courage. There's courage of the Ukrainian soldier on the battlefield fighting for the homeland and ordinary Ukrainian civilians uh, resisting the Russian occupiers, but I do think dissident Russians are brave as well. Um, why? Because they're taking very real risks. They can go to prison for years. Uh, they could even be killed. You know, um, look at the number of journalists that have gone missing in Russia. It's one of the world's most dangerous countries for journalists. Um, I have a book by Anna Politkovskaya. Um, I have a book that's banned in Russia. Uh, by the late Alexander Lukashenko, um, Litvinenko. I keep making <laughs> that's that's a bad mistake to make. Not the Belarusian dictator, but the the Russian uh, former spy who was poisoned in London, uh, Litvinenko, not Lukashenko. My mistake. Um, but you know, I've just watched an interview uh, with a Russian. Rave group, the, I think their genre would be described as rave, but actually the videos are a little bit surrealist. Uh, I quite like them, I quite like their style. It's it's a bit weird, a bit surreal, um, probably not to everyone's taste, but I first came across them on the Eurovision, they were the Russian Eurovision entry, I believe last year, and they're called Little Big. Um, but basically they had to flee to Los Angeles because they um, publicly opposed the war. They publicly opposed the invasion. And uh, Newsnight's Kirsty Wark was interviewing them from LA. Um, this is the, the two front band members, uh, Sonia uh, Tayurkin. Let me just get the names correct here. Um, 
they think you know such people deserve respect uh just bear with me a second i'll put a link anyway but i just want to name check here uh sonia to your and uh let me get this up i've just got the video so i want to pronounce the names correctly Sonia Turyurski and uh, Ilya Prusikin. Sonia Turyurski and Ilya Prusikin. Now they're being interviewed by Kirsty Walker. It's not a long interview, it's about a minute and a half. And you know, they said that they feel safer in Los Angeles and they're not they said other Russian artists are doing this. Now they did say one thing and I would put a note of caution here. They said that all their friends opposed Putin, but um I'm not sure if that's necessarily I'd like to think it's representative of the Russian population, but I think there are a lot of Russians who are very nationalistic and pro-Putin because they've been fed lies. Um, you know, they've been told via Russian propaganda that the Ukrainians are Nazis and they're going in to liberate Ukraine. And, you know, they were fed videos showing Russians being butchered and massacred to, to kind of stir up hatred against the Ukrainian government and the Ukrainian people. And it was a pack of lies. Um, so, you know, with respect to Little Big, I'm not sure that they and their friends might feel that way, but I do think there are strong nationalistic sentiments in Russia. I don't know what the proportion is, who can say the true proportion, but I, I think probably it's still more in favour of Putin. Um, but who knows what could happen? Russia is a complex country and it's a history of usually, you know, where there are changes whether it from a be a leader dying or an internal coup it's usually bloody and it's usually turbulent anything can happen in russia um but i just think that when history is written it has to show that there were people who defied this just like there were germans who defied the third reich like hans and sophie Scholl and others um so i do not support collective vilification of russians because i think all that does is polarize Russian dissidents. It, may, it puts them in a position where they're trying to fight against the regime, but they're not getting support from outsiders because, oh, they're Russian, so let's just collectively punish them. I, I disagree with that. Um, and I think it's grossly unfair to punish them because of their nationality. Like when, when the invasion happened, there were examples of Russian musicians being banned from Western concerts and so on simply because of their nationality. Now, I want to be clear, any Russian who supports Putin, I'm fine with them being banned or um, censored because I think that we need to send out a strong message. I think it's a form of fascism and I don't think they should be allowed a platform in Western countries um, so long as they support Putinism, uh, you know, with their grotesque little Z symbol. Um, I definitely think those Russians should um, be a censure. I mean, we have a right to decide who comes into our country. So I definitely think they should be seen as extremists because they're supporting Putinist fascism. So they should be targeted. But not all Russians, especially not those who have actually spoken out against this. Um, clearly, um, Vladimir Klitschko, who's a guy I have a lot of respect for, a former world uh, boxing heavyweight champion, you know, he's called for all Russian boxers to be targeted. Again, um, I don't agree with that because, as you know, with all due respect to Klitschko, what about those Russian boxers who have spoken out against Putin? And some have, or have spoken out against the war. Are we going to target them? I mean, I support, broadly speaking, Russia being banned from the Olympics because it is a, is a national symbol. But individual Russian athletes, I think they should be allowed to compete under a neutral flag so long as they're not Putin supporters. Um, I just think we have to be careful about collectively vilifying all Russians because actually that will pander into the Kremlin's narrative that the West is Russophobic. Okay, that's the, I think Putin would want that. I think he would want to say, oh, look, the West is against all Russians. Also, I think there is somewhat double standards in this regard. I mean, we don't we don't punish all Chinese nationals because of the actions of the CCP. 
So what's the difference? Um, China hasn't actually invaded anyone yet. Let's say China was to retake Taiwan by force. Would we suddenly, you know, throw out all Chinese students? I don't know. I, I think it's double standard there. We can even apply this to culture. I mean, I don't want to go to left field here, but it's very conceivable in a Bond villain, in a Bond film, to have a Russian villain, but you can't have a Chinese villain. Why not? Well, why? Why is that more taboo? Um, both are authoritarian governments. Both are hostile to the West. So why not have a Bond villain film where you have a Chinese villain? It would be racist. But it's okay to make a Russian villain because they're a lot of them are Caucasians. It's just big double standards there in how we look at Russian versus Chinese citizens. I basically take the view you can't. You can't blame someone for the actions of the government unless they're defending the said government. Now, if you get nationalistic Chinese students who are mouthing off the CCP's propaganda, I say they should be challenged. And if they engage in bullying of their peers, and this has happened, I think they should be kicked out of whichever university they're in and possibly lose their visa, depending on the seriousness of what they've done. Um... But I just don't believe in collective punishment of people. We could apply this to anything. I mean, as a British citizen, I wouldn't like it if I went to a former colony like India and, uh, you know, I was treated with hostility for no other reason than my nationality. Um, or someone who has an anti-West agenda gave me a hard time because of no other reason than my passport. You cannot vilify someone because of their nationality. And that should apply to Russians as much as anyone else. Um, you know, Russians, are, there's 146 million Russians. Or it's around that mark, it might be slightly less now. But it's, you know, you can't say they're all Putin cheerleaders because they're not. And some of them, some young people in Russia have taken very real risks to do the right thing. Um, and it isn't just, you know, idealistic young people. Uh, there have been mothers who have asked what's happening to their sons why are the sons being used as um cannon fodder in ukraine so I, I think it's a mistake to vilify all russians and i don't think we should go down that path but definitely putin cheerleaders and by the way you know some of the worst putin cheerleaders are westerners it's just emerged that um but potentially one of the sources of this, you know, intelligence leak in the United States is one, um, Sarah, let me get her name up. I'm just looking at various sources here, so bear with me. Um, Sarah Bills, uh, she's been apparently exposed as as being the, the account Donbass Devushka. Now, this is a former U.S. Navy officer, and she's basically... If if this is accurate, she is, you know, basically a Russian propagandist. I think she should be charged with treason and hopefully serve prison time if she is guilty, if it's proven. Um, I think that's beyond despicable. I think, you know, this is someone who has pledged allegiance to the United States, served in the armed forces of the United States, yet she is serving as a propagandist for a foreign dictator. A hostile foreign dictator who threatens Western security. I think someone like her, I think, should absolutely go to prison. And I would say the same in the UK. I think any British soldier who um, supports Putin needs to be seriously scrutinised. Any police officer, any politician. Private citizens, not so much because the security implications are less. But I think useful idiots who defend Putin, you know, they should be ridiculed. I think they should be challenged. If they're not in um, any sort of national security, then they have free speech. They have free speech to be idiots. But I do think people involved in politics, in uh, police work, in the armed forces, any of people like that who support Putin, I do think they should come under the microscope. Because... I think we've got double agents in our midst. I really do. I don't think that's hyperbole. I think we are basically in a new Cold War, and we have to see it that way. It's no good saying let's just try and reach out to Putin. This is this man's beyond reason. 
is beyond um, compromise. So I think we need to take this seriously. And I think that, you know, Putin's propagandists in the West, they need to face as much ridicule and scorn and scrutiny as possible. I'm not talking about threats of violence, okay? It's, you know, we don't go down the same path as uh, Kremlin thugs, but I do think they should um, face a lot of heat. You know, they can, to me, they're beyond reprehensible because they are using the freedom of speech that we we hold in the West, or what, to support uh, a regime that's hostile to the West? I honestly want to say to them, why the hell don't you get out and go to Russia? You know, Russian dissidents are coming to the West. Why the hell doesn't Putin's cheerleaders, if they think Russia's so great and the West is so bad, why the hell don't they get out? The same with CCP cheerleaders. It just, their hypocrisy is, to me, abhorrent. Um, that's my take on it. Um, you know, and by the way, a few of them have come to my channel and have said, oh, you, you claim that you're for liberty and democracy, but you're against our freedom. No, I'm saying you can you can spout off your pro-Putin lines if you want. In fact, you've done it a few times on my channel, some of you. Well, I've never run to GCHQ and reported you. You know, if you want to be useful idiots, if you want to be on the wrong side of history, if you want to look like moral minnows, then go ahead. But don't expect me to be polite to you. Don't expect me to be respectful of your repulsive position, because I'm not going to be. I'm not talking about people who are in the middle, although that's not a position I think is very sustainable. I'm talking about student cheerleaders, right? So, you know, I know some subscribers recently have sort of asked me about some of this stuff, and um, I'm not going to name check here, but um, if you're watching this, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm not talking about you. I don't agree with you people who have sort of taken this middle ground approach. Basically, I don't think you can be neutral when it comes to tyranny, but I'm not saying, I'm not holding you on the exact same level as the Putin cheerleaders. I'm just saying that I don't think you can be neutral with this. Uh, right, I'll leave it there. But, you know, I personally have enormous, enormous respect for Russians brave enough to defy the Putin regime. I really do. Um, it's interesting, you know, may, we may find that other hardliners are actually the ones who bring down Putin and they, they might be just as bad. So, although I think Putin is a central part of this, um, I really do, we shouldn't get too excited about Putin's downfall if it only means he's going to be replaced by someone like Prigozhin, who would be just as bad. Um, you know, someone who's going to be just as ultra-nationalistic and maybe even more militant, if that's even possible, we should be a little bit cautious about welcoming that too much because I think that, you know, Putin is a huge part of the problem, but um, he's not the only hardliner in Russia. I mean, if someone like Sergei Lavrov took over, that would certainly not be a moment of to rejoice. That would be just more of the same. Although I don't think Lavrov or the others would ever cultivate the personality cult that Putin has, that's the difference. I think when Putin falls, there will be, I think it will be a major event, whether that be from a coup, whether he just dies naturally. Uh, there's many reports suggesting his health is in serious question. Um, but I think it will be a, a significant moment because I think it will indicate some sort of change in Russia. Who knows what form that will take? But I honestly believe the world will be a better place when Putin's gone. That's my honest opinion.